Hello YouTube fans, here again, and I figure why not do this one. Alien, in space, nobody can hear you stream. Despite me after seeing the one in the cinema, to do the classic, the original, the classic theatrical 1979 Alien. And then probably after this, I'll probably talk about the director's cut, and do probably do a comparison and so on, as well as all the other versions of the Alien films, whether it be Alien, whether it be Alien 3, whether it be Alien and Erection, that's what I like to call it, or so on, why not? So without ado, let's talk about the classic theatrical one, the history of the film, everything about the film, the ideas they had in the film, and so on, why not? So, people might think what the fuck I'm on about here, I'm going to talk about 1974. It could have come out in 1974, hear me out. In 1974, a very long director named Con Tarpenter, that's right, Halloween star himself, Con Tarpenter, the one with different Halloween, giving us the fog, giving us the thing, this goes on. His first big play as a director, a student director at the time, he did a long student sort of a film about a beach ball in space, an alien beach ball thing in spaceship, obviously not alien things, and it was attacking people on a spaceship. It's more of a booth, it was more of a comedy. They used a real beach ball and it was bouncing around and holding people a prisoner on a spaceship and it was called Dark Star. Dark Star was a popular film, but it wasn't a big business, it was just a typical student film for the long director called Contap and it did. But then they had another director called Whitley Stock. Whitley Stock must have liked the film because it inspired him to do another version of this being Alien and the rest is history. So you could say that that star, Alien, is sort of like a remake, only more honour, not as comedy. And one of the films that inspired this film, Alien, was, believe it or not, was... Da, 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 da. The little bit theme there, that being Star Wars. That's why it's Star Wars. When you think about it, sci-fi with a dinosaur. The only sci-fi we ever had during the 50s was your typical B-monster films. Your typical B-space movies with a one-eyed monster and all this. Sci-fi was more predictable, you know what I mean? You may have one or two what was popular, let's say, like Westworld. Or Without Burping. Loden's Ward and so on. But most of them, they were predictable. It was like... A political world of being dominated and dominated, you know, like world of ball, what would happen if people ruled the world and tell you how to live. In many ways, loads of rooms like that. So sci-fi, it was dying out. Not a lot of people was into sci-fi anymore. It was a dinosaur. But, and I keep saying the word, but, but, thanks to Star Wars, it brought back the, the sci-fi. A lot of people was into Star Wars. It also brought back Star Trek. When they did the motion picture, so they decided why not do a monster film called Alien, and the rest is history. This was the first science fiction horror movie, which was funny because kids went to see this, ever a bit when they saw Tom Earth get the alien, the chest burst, or bounce out of his chest. Because at the time, nobody knew that this was going to be in today's era an 18 rating. Nobody did. They thought it was going to be a longer audience because sci-fi was always what for a longer audience. So you've got the day opening, you've got the space chaff. I love the opening of Ridley Stock stuff. And then you've got the film Alien. I was like, it slowly comes near you. And we've got this is the first film, the first film after it, Star Wars, the beautiful, beautiful practical effects. How I miss that golden era. You never see the budget in it. You've got a lot of good actors, like I say, Don Hurt. And Sidoni Weaver in her first big break. And I do know originally she was not going to be the survivor. I think originally it was going to be the actor that played Dias was going to be the main character. And then decided to turn it. And like I say, it's in the future. So you've got all, you've got Vata Bittar, most people that do in his name, who's you know, popularly being the Bond villain, Live and Let Die. He played the bad guy in that. And again, he's in a space chaff. And it's in the future, so you've got the idea of the miners. They get an SOS tool, big word for me, to go to this planet. They find these eggs, everybody knows it, and 
the face hooker for the first time. Ever been when people first saw this, they know what the fuck was going on. Son of it finds it, he's staring at it, jumps out, and obviously it puts him in a coma. You've got one guy that, um, Ripley, I don't know if it's Tony Reeve, to just to die shit. He was to us like a big old ass for letting him in, because you can kind of understand why. If you don't let him in, it would have terminated everybody. That's why you had to leave it for so long. But again, if they wouldn't have let him in, Don Hurt's character would have died. It would have, it would have, could have killed him. So it was a tough decision. You find out in the film, that's not the case. So, poor Don Hurt's character, which does, sort of think was inspired at the time, because one day after this, he did Midnight Express. Damn good film. So, he's got this big thing stuck on his face. Eventually, it comes off. And things seem normal. They're having a meal to death or And this is a good bit. Ridley Stock never told one of the actresses what was going to happen. She never even knew this was going to be written in. Not all the others knew except for her. So the bit where the test person comes out the dive stomach, beats on her and kills him. The bit where she's steaming and she's got fake blood all over her face. She never even knew they were going to put that in the film. She never did. And so the sort, the fear in her face was for real. I mean, she was pissed after that. <laughs> so he's dead. They send his body into space. And then it ties on with the story. So they're now looking for this weird alien thing. And the next guy gets killed. I always love the bit where he's looking for the, the tap. They've got a tap. And he says, Ee, tiki, tiki, tiki. Meow. Ee, tiki, tiki. Next thing you know, the alien comes. And you've got the idea it drags him under. Now I do know. I do know there's a lot, a lot of deleted scenes in this film, and that's where the diet just cut repaired the deleted scenes. At the time, it could have been time, it could have been budget. A lot of other producers, but you think that was right, it wasn't with the film, it just got fought but failed the fail, and decided a couple of years later to bring out the diet just cut because there's a scene where that a scene where he gets killed by the aim, and you first see it get befilled the first time. That was going to be more do some. It was going to get him by his face. It was going to lift him up. It was going to cuss his face. We have blood coming down. Going to drag him under. Have it to tag. It's blood chipping all over his face. You don't see that in the theatrical. Instead, you see it get him. It drags him. You got that idea. It bites his face. It drags him in. And then you just get Avatar saying, It's huge. The damn thing is big. But I'm thinking, You never saw it. You never knew what happened. That's one thing I will say where the diet just cut did improve from the theatrical because you never knew that never made sense. That never made fucking sense. How Avatar could say it's huge, it's big because he was he was there when it happened in the theatrical version. But that's one way I would say the diet just cut did improve, did improve on that scene. There's little bits here and there, and I do to the theatrical one. It's do. You don't see that much of the alien until it kills that first guy. And I think that made the film. Because now we all know what the alien looks like. There have been sequels after sequels and video games and other versions, even comic books. But for the first time when people saw that alien, the effect, the fact it was a man dressed up with an alien suit, a costume, the lot. I do know some of the, one of the actors that did some of the stunt for the alien was well-known stuntman, did a load, I mean loads, did a lot of stunts for Christopher Lee when he was doing the Jack of the films, he did some of the stunts there, this was a very well-known stuntman, never got recognition for this and it pissed me off, he, he sort of got recognition because he did some of the stunts for the alien and again there's a lot of deleted scenes which is a damn shame but I do admit, I do admit the diet just cut and poos so the cut story short, they're now looking for the alien, they send Dyer's in, who you think should be the main character. And you do have this computer he talks to, go muff off. That's the same thing, they never have muffer in anything else after this. I like that idea, they have this thing and he talks to it, they call it muff off. And it goes down, it's saft. Again, you don't see what happens. I think that made it more nervous. And the diet just cut to such pain what happens to Dyer's. But I always felt it was more cheap because you never do that death. Did it kill him? Has it tagged him under? What's it done to him? I told us again, the diet just got explains that one. Then she's upset Rip there, then she ass gets older for, she hits ass, ass starts to attack her. This for its time was pretty ballsy, 
balls to see this down on my newspaper. I could either be a dirty magazine. You know, there's a lot of men on the ship. It's not for me to do it. It just looked like a pornographic magazine. Now the newspaper, a paper, a mag, whatever. But it's down to stuff a magazine in a mouth. I'm thinking this is a unique way of trying to kill someone. I would decide to have to get him off me. He twats him. You see white blood skirting out. Again, that would have really sucked an audience for the time. And I love the bit. They plug him in. They want to know what the fuck's going on. And they know now it's been sent, this alien thing. I love the bit where he says, I don't fancy your chances, but but you have my sympathy. And then they unplug it. I don't I love that scene. I just think that scene is so unique. So I always love that scene, you know. You don't fancy your chances, but you have my sympathy. And like I say, a little bit of the avatar says, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, pull the plug. And they do, and they burn the face. I love the effect there. Where the actor, that's the old did like, I think it could have been right milk or something, he just spits out, made it look like blood. I love that scene. So again, they go after the alien. The alien comes down. This is a bit where not a lot of people knew how he, this woman got killed. Nobody did. We know how the guy got killed. He got him, he got that idea, it's broken his spine and it's ripped out his ducts out and killed him. But you've got the horrible steaming off the woman. She's steaming hysterical. It's really horrible sound. Really horrible. We saw the reason as Ripley comes in. You see the after sort, but not really that much. You see Avatar's bloody. You've got the idea his spine's been broken. You see sort of like her legs. But you don't actually see her body. Not even in the director's cut do you see the after of what it's done to her. And there's always been that debate. Has it raped her? Has it ripped her to pieces? Has it strangled her? Has it sliced her stomach open? What's it done to her? And I think the sound effects where you, you hear that and the horrible steaming. That you could picture in your mind. See, this is what's wrong with horror movies today. This is what's wrong with horror movies. Sometimes not knowing makes it more frightening. And the idea of what it's done to this woman, we'll never know. There have been ideas, and there were ideas originally, but it was never used. So you've got the scenes, you've got to destroy the ship. And she shouts out, Mother! And she gets out, and the ship falls up. And then you've got the date she wears, she's already weaving, has ripped, she's got a pair of knickers on. Definitely was a bit revealing. And then the alien's in the ship, it's trying to get her. She gets his space helmet on and she shoots it out of space. And I love the scene where she shoots it out of space. You've got a monologue of her saying, This is the Tom Ball and all this. And she goes to feet in that sonic feet bed. And it ends a beautiful, Beautiful store, and I had to take this one longer than what I normally do. The diet just caught probably not as long. I do know there's a scene, like I say, where you do get to see Dias and you find out his fate, but I'll leave that for the diet just caught. But the theatrical one, like I say, in 1979, it was a bid it. There was very, very thing, you know, letting kids watch it. Even though back in 1979, like Star Wars, they actually had figures. So the film alien, they actually had figures. To market the film, but it does now. It was a sci fi movie, it was a sci fi horror film. What inspired a lot of other sci fi horror films, what was like spin offs and rip offs, which I'll probably get to at another point. Um, and it does as this went on, it inspired the sequel being Aliens, as well as a diet just caught, and so on. And it also launched Rip the Start. Without Rip the Start, a couple of years later, you wouldn't have had Braid one off. It's sad to say, you know, Blade Runner wasn't as successful as Alien. It's only over the years. There have been that many different versions of Blade Runner. And we all know now it's a total classic. But Alien was the big film. It was a proper film in 1979. It launched to Johnny Reaver. I think it made John Hurt. After this, we, know, we all know he did The Elephant Man. Very good actor. May he rest. A lot of good actors who, in, who did this. I sadly no longer with us, and that sort of sucks. But the effects, the actor, the alien, everything in the film, that's why I had to see this a longer one. It be Thursday. I love the stop motion footage, I love the model work, I love the set work, everything in this film I love. And for 1979, it was considered one of the most scariest other films that were out at that time. You know, at the time, the scariest one would have had to have been Doss. This had to be the next step up from Doss in space. Nobody can hear you steam. And it does launch, like I said, about repeating myself. 
it loads a lot of other sci-fi other films so for that fuck it it's a classic a 10 star rating for me but into them be smart be safe see you later